of the the initial few residencies were county council residencies, they weren't arts council residencies. So the remit of that was quite there was quite a community focus to that. Like part of a third of the work was working with the community at the time, a third of the work was working with Shim Satira at the National Folk Theatre, and then a third was my own practice. So um, there was a remit to engage with the community. So whether it be schools or active retirement groups or um, women's groups. So it was really up to me who I wanted to engage with. Um, so I probably taught at every school in Kerry between, you know, Tarbert to Carrisadeen. Um, tons of work in youth groups, um, youth clubs, women's groups, active retirement groups. So there was, there was a huge, a huge uh, engagement over over the years. I tend to focus not so much on primary schools, but on secondary schools. Um, so kind of uh, my my age limit was like kind of fourteen and up. Um, I did a lot of work with women's groups and elderly groups as well. So yeah, there was quite. And then out of that came Kerry Youth Dance Theatre. So that kind of was a, a, a very organic. Um, process. I was working in a school in Kenmare. Um, I think there were all the school kids that wanted to bunk class on Arts Week, and I did a week's work with a group of students there, and we made a piece. And they were an incredible bunch of young people. They wanted to keep it up. It was kind of half guys and half girls, which is really unusual. Um, they wanted to keep it going. Um, the school weren't hugely supportive, you know, because it wasn't football. It's just Kerry is, is made on. So um, we took it outside the school, and, and uh, the young people wanted to. Go. They came every Saturday and Sunday for almost four years. Um, and that's how KYDT came to came to pass. But what I found with with young people, um, especially when they're engaged in you know stage schools and hip hop and all that kind of stuff, when they come over to the contemporary dance side, they never look back. They they they're hooked because they there's a there's a they the freedom there. the freedom there to express themselves and to really be and to, to create and and that's something that I don't think they get in those other practices. So um, without question, once once you get them in. They never look back, which is a brilliant, brilliant thing. I think there needs to be more dialogue and um, more, um, I guess, processes put in place between between the artists and the venues and the county councils. And I think if that could be, if that structure could be really um, worked, then I think there'd be probably much better audiences. And, and also allowing the artists to do their thing. I think sometimes there's a, you know, we want to make work. Um, the audience, uh, the venues want you know, bums on seats, and then the county councils want um, participation. You know, so there's there's a way for the whole thing to work, but it can't be the artist doing everything, um, and it can't be at the at the uh, the risk of the artist not getting to actually make their work. So I think um, there needs to be some kind of process put in place so that there's kind of a, a dialogue going through all three. Mm -hmm. We've tried. We, we yeah. tried last year. We did. We had a a kind of a focus group for all the dance artists and residents and. All the county council arts office were involved. Were invited. All the venues were invited. Who had artists and residents, and all the artists and residents. Um, all the artists showed up, um, but the the, pre the representation for everybody else wasn't wasn't so great. I mean, and everybody's busy, and I appreciate that. Um, but the only way it's going to work is that everybody comes in the room together and fit. You know, the idea was that we would share, like from Kerry to Cork to Galway, to how we're all working. We're all working really, really differently, and every venue has a different role, and every county council has a different remit. And the idea was to share all these skills and try and figure out best practices and stuff. But until everybody shows up into the room, you know, you know, w with also the Arts Council and Dance Ireland, um, that's how it's going to change. Is when we all start working together, um, because there's a lot of there's a lot of information there now. Initially, we kind of set set out uh, a program that involved young people, adults, and older people. And we developed it through age because it seemed like in terms of marketing and, and kind of targeting a particular um, aspect or, or community even, the age seemed to be a, 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 an, the easiest. It's not ideal and that's kind of difficult at times, but um, it's, uh, it seemed the easiest way to kind of develop a programme. Um, with that idea, as I said, of kind of bringing different age groups together and different communities together. But it's developed in a number of different ways. It's, you know, we've kind of got a firmly established youth group. We've got a, a, a pretty much established um, dance ensemble for people aged 50 plus. You know, we've got a regular creative uh, program, the choreography project running for adults, and that runs every year. You know, we have evening classes for adults. So there's a lot of now, there's a, there's a, a sense of, of things kind of being, you know, year on year, that some things that are really kind of just, they keep going as far as we can, you know. 
and um, and then always looking at how partnerships can can develop with other organisations through through some of these initiatives and. Uh, one of the strongest, of course, is our relationship and our partnership with Dublin City Council, three different sectors in Dublin City Council, which is a whole other area to talk about. It, you know, people come back to you kind of, you know, and I guess it's the demands that are made on you that draws you to particular a areas of work. And, of course, it's the older people who win hands down and in terms of that they keep coming back and, you know, they're there and they keep asking when is the next project and... What are we doing next? And you know, and that is that the program for older people is 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 just you know really wide ranging, really kind of developing you know at a pace, um, and maybe that speaks about I'm not sure. Maybe it's it speaks about maybe there's been a lack of engagement with contemporary dance in the past, or or dance you know or, or initiatives in general. You know, like like the ones that we're providing, maybe there is a real there is a real hunger there that people of that generation and that age group haven't experienced dance it, it like this in the past, and there's a real need. You can sense it. Um, younger people, there's a there's an awful lot going on in dance, and their attention is drawn to the to lots and different things. So that's a much more competitive market for want of a better word um it's a really interesting area that, that working with younger people because you've got lots of crossovers going on you know their interests you know they're they're hungry in a different way when you're working with people who have all been trained in at least similar styles to what you're working in i think especially in contemporary work now, there is a feeling that authenticity is really important. So that you uh, take on choreography authentically and move it through your body. Um, I think that's very much a feel, that's been a feeling in contemporary dance for, I mean, 40 years or more. But when people have been through more or less the same training processes, you know, ballet schools as children, intensive university dance experiences um i feel like the range the people are really working in professional is kind of it's it's not narrow but it's it's a range it's a specific language isn't it's, it? a, it's a specific language exactly um and you're these you're working with bodies that are fluent in that language so they really go there and then when you work with people who are not trained in that they offer you some incredibly surprising, transformative, innovative um, translations, or it's not even a translation, it's like a full taking ownership of something that you couldn't really have um, anticipated, even because you too have been through that training. Um, and of course I haven't been, I didn't go to dance school, so um, and my background is in theatre, so often I will go into the verbal or the text, or, um, so I have my own sort of language that I've been trained in, and I, I think when you engage with the community, you really get to see, um, yeah, like something, really unique. So when I was making the show for Big House Festival, I wanted to make it outdoors, and I knew I wanted to work with a lot of bodies, and I knew that this festival was trying to bridge some kind of gap between the local community as well as a professional arts practice and so I proposed an idea to do an outdoor dance work using professional dancers and um, engaging with uh, finding between 15 and 20 young people to work on the project so it was probably my first real coalescence of different practices coming into um, socially engaged or community-based dance practice we definitely we had done youth projects and it was part of my um, theatre degree that we did uh, theatre and education and facilitation processes, which I think is really key um, in training me as an actor and an arts professional, that that was part from, from my degree level, we were thinking about community practice. Um, my experience with it was, it was sort of intense because we were trying to find the young people to run it as an intensive process so it was not a sustained practice we were going to gather the young people to work together for a week and present the show at the end of it 
So there were some successes and some difficulties. Um, one of the difficulties just being that practical thing of I was not based in the community. And so therefore, to find people to be part of it, you really need word of mouth. You need someone to advocate for you within the community. So I took on a producer that was based out there and I went about it that way. Um, so f- sourcing the young people took time. Um, and then again, because of the nature of the project, we ended up going a lot through finding young dancers through local schools, local ballet schools. Um, so I would have liked it to be more of an open call, but the, the way the structure of the performance and the structure of the the timeline for working meant that there just wasn't it that wasn't going to be a possibility um but once we had gathered them i was very committed to involving them in my artistic process um so i i sort of know once you facilitate an experience for performers they will take on research pretty thoroughly and so my first instance of dealing with them was to treat them as as fully involved participants of the work um so a lot of the dance artists I would have engaged with in my career would be um, people from, say, coming from Judson Church or so experimental dance practices. Um, so I, they were doing a lot of improvisation um, and they were doing a lot of, a lot of them were ballet trained. So they were having to let go some of that training to, to take on some of what I was offering them. But I really... Um, with them created a tight score that they then had to embody and figure out each performance and it was really it was quite amazing to watch them really take it on so wholeheartedly so like there were a number of rules um, but that they as a group had to negotiate those rules and navigate the pathways with which they solve those puzzles if you like so one of the days they're in this meadow and there are a group of people having a picnic in the meadow. Um, and so before I went out, before they went out, I said, this is happening out there. You are going to perform your score. You're not going to ignore them. You're going to see that they're there. You're going to be safe in your body. You're going to look after these people. But at the same time, you're going to continue with what they do. And the response was they got excited. They're like, oh, this is a real problem to solve. Um. And I mean, we're talking about 14, 15 year olds, like quite young, quite young people and quite young um, performers, you know, even if they've been performing since childhood, you know, there's not a huge amount of experience. And they really, they really took on the work and took on the research. And I learned a lot from them um, through the process. And they learned a lot by me really offering, I didn't at any stage feel I had to dumb something down or if I did, I just didn't. I didn't didn't dumb things down. I didn't compromise what I was doing. Um, and I could see some of them really blossom. And I felt a kind of a synergy because I was getting to see the research done by so many pe- bodies, which you just don't really get to work with that in professional arts practice. You would never have 24 people working on a piece of choreography. Um, 